Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to do a little gothic romanticism. This wonderful piece is going to be a lot of fun to paint. It's going to be very cathartic for many of you. It's an excellent look at how to make a silhouette a little more interesting to create a fantasy color scheme on your moon. And of course, as always, a little more cloud work on the mic today is my husband, John. Hi guys. He's going to be tracking me with one of our cameras so you can see every step of the action. My whole job here is to explain everything in the process that I can, every step, so that you can create this painting for yourself at home. That's the whole goal here. I hope you guys are super excited. If you're here for the live stream, hey! And if you're here on the replay, thank you for making it. If you're not getting notifications, check that little bell and make sure that those little parentheses are there and that you haven't turned off all notifications on the app because sometimes they're not getting sent out. But of course, you can always track us on Facebook and Twitter and everything because we tend to make announcements before we go live, even though, as usual, <laughs> we were late. which <laughs> It's something different every time. I think I'm ready to just jump on in. I think everybody's ready to jump on in. Let's just jump on in. All right. All right. So we have this wonderful painting. This is called The Raven. And I'm going to be doing this on an 11 by 14 gesso board by Ampersand. Now, um, you can paint on anything that takes acrylic paint. This is just what I'm getting to enjoy painting on. They gave me a bunch of them, and I'm really liking them. I'm really loving them. I kind of worked in the sketch a little bit, but we're going to talk about how it got laid in. But first wishes because we've got to put there's so many wishes that were in the group and online that we captured that we have on our canvas uh tracy wishes she has uh, her new mama to get well fast and be with her baby um heather is wishing for a very successful brain surgery for her mom amber is you know just needing like a lot of love and support and luck she lost a house to fire uh ross is wishing for a family who lost both a cousin and an uncle in one week Melissa is just wishing for a peaceful passing of her father. And then this one really got me. Deb sent this into our group. And I'm not going to go into the specifics of where this wish came from. But we really, really, really have to do something about bullying. And so the wish is that we find a way to help the aggressors find a better channel for what they're doing and how they're expressing their frustration. That we as a community and as a society act more in kindness and acceptance we we don't have to tolerate people that are different i say we have to embrace those that are different so you know it's going to have to go a bit a bit further and we're all going to have to work on it and really push because the youngest of us are most susceptible to this but this is an all people at all stages of life problem and so we'd love to see an end to that and i think this is a perfect painting because i imagine if you're going through something you know you're probably feeling a little bit and what I will say as somebody who was bullied in school quite aggressively I was very grateful for my art notebook it is a really useful tool I put a lot of my feelings in there and it helped me get through let's look at our paint okay over here I have quinacridone magenta cad yellow medium phthalo blue diox purple titanium white I have a couple options for how you can put in the black I sometimes like to use black colored gesso because it's a lot like a fluid paint, but you can see this is a much bigger bottle, and a lot of times I can get this very economically. It does wear your brushes out a little bit faster, but my brushes are sort of tough. And then as a really wonderful option, I have a fluid, also known as a soft body paint, carbon black. You could do either one of those. Hopefully the studio is not so dry today that I cannot get my background in. I'm going to put my colors out on my palette getting ready for this. Let's use off the last of this Dox Purple. You can see I've crimped the heck out of this tube, but i got to get the last little bit out, and I know I'm going to be using a lot. Yesterday when I was painting, the paint was drying on my brush. It was crazy. Now my basic background actually is the Quinacridone and the Dioxx Purple. I'm not going to get the blue in until I do the clouds. Mm. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, let me put my little white out and then I will add my yellow in a minute when I'm getting in there. And let's talk about sketching this in. Okay. And I'm going to tell you guys some important information using my infographic, which is if you chat. Oh my gosh, John, that was so good. You've just, I didn't even trick you that time. What are you talking about? You just like snapped that camera. Oh yeah. You snapped it. You were all over it. <laughs> okay. So if you check this, <laughs> we did this live. So it's like, <laughs> So if you check the description below, 
you're going to see a link to our website. On that is going to be a printout, uh, a PDF of the finished painting that you can print out. There's going to be a PDF of a traceable that you can print out and use to get the image on. And this infographic. Okay. And I think this is really important because it's going to let you know some things. I do think having one of these little $2 T-squares is a lifesaver. All the measurements are set from the top. And basically what I did is I set the center of him at four and a quarter inches over, right? So his body is right in that line if you divide him in half. The top of his hat was also at four and a quarter inches. And then I did the top of his shoulders were at 10 inches right here, right? So that's incredibly helpful. The center of the canvas is at five and a half inches and I put those lines in as well. And this center of the canvas is at seven. And that lets me, if you see this kind of graph and grid in the placement. So what I did was I started and I put in the first, the little slender ellipse to his hat. And then I came down to my center line here, which is a seven inches and put the base of the hat in and connected the two sides. Once that was in, I came down about, oh gosh, this is a, I, you know, I can guesstimate often, but it's about a half inch. So I took about a half inch and I made a little half inch ellipse. Then I tucked a couple ears in here. I came across and I actually worked my shoulder line out first and put my shoulder space in right away. Once that was in, I was able to put my half moon that touches the hat up here. Once the half moon is in, I put this curve line into my shoulder and this curve line into my shoulder. Now, his moon, which I used a plate to actually get in, is just eight inches in diameter. And the moon is just under two inches from the top of the canvas, just about an inch from the side and right around under, it's like three, it's one and three quarters inches from this edge. And so that's how I got the moon placed in and I just used a dessert plate to put him that moon in. So you see that going in? And then my raven, what I did to get him in is I put a little circle right here for his chest to get a sense of size and I tried to put it pretty close to him so that when the tail came down, I'd have room for the tail once this is in, I did a line up for his neck, another angled line for the top of his head, another angled line for the top right here to the beak. The beak comes out, arcs down, Let me try. comes back. Don't make him smile. He's not going to like it. Curving in to the throat. Then, of course, the wing structure is a little arced off the back. And you'll have to remember that the feathers are placed out like this. The tail then comes down right, to this little point down here, and then back up. And then on the feet, my little advice is, first I draw the foreshortened little line over the shoulder, right, where it's gonna go. Then I can put the back claw in. Once I have the black claw in, I can come to his little ankle. That lets me put the front of his leg. And then the second one in. And how I got everything so soft, if you're wondering, because I've gotta take my words out before I start, is I took just a clean brush and clean water. Oh. And then I came and took water and softened them. See how that's doing? Oh yeah. And so then when I'm painting over this canvas with, this is a watercolor uh, pencil. I have the link to this exact one, they're woodless, in the description below. I pick colors. Uh, I was just asked recently about how to keep them from bleeding through. So this is one thing. First, you smooth them out if you don't want them to bleed through in any, any way, right? And you can always, like, soften out your sketch line. But you have to remember this is pigment, and this impacts the painting. So I try to pick a pigment. This was ultramarine. This is one of the few that will actually tell you the colors um, in this price point. And because um, it's an economical price point. And so I know that that isn't going to disrupt the color in my painting. You know what I just did? What's that? I erased my plate. 
Oh, no. But you know what? That's okay, because I have it right over there. Can I go grab it? Sure. Okay. You're wireless. I am wireless. You can just wander under. Uh, I'm just going to wander around and get... Okay. So, free one, Sherpa. I'd like to crack you up, because my daughter was super annoyed when she saw this in the studio. What's that? The Hello Kitty plate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, why do you have my Hello Kitty plate? Why did you take my plate? She was not okay with that. She was like, that is not cool. Not cool, Mom. Not cool at all. So, I've got just enough of the line to get this back in. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to put this right back in and hopefully I'll get it where I had that originally or close so, enough. Okay, there we go. So I'm not great at drawing a freehand circle, circle vertically. I have to do it uh, horizontally and that's how I get around that. Does that help you guys lay it in a little bit better? Totally. And of course we have the traceable. Yeah. And that graphic, if you need it for reference, on the website for free because that's how we are. And you can find those links in the... What, the description below, right? Yeah, you got to hit that more button, though. YouTube gives me 50,000 characters, but it shows you, like, 15. <laughs> so, that's how that works. I'm going to grab a nice little background brush. I have been just sporting these little short handles. So, this is a number 26 Ruby Satin Bright. This is a short handle brush for acrylic painting. I'm going to dip this in my water. Drag off the extra. I want the brush to be damp, especially since my studio is so dry today. And I'm going to take a little of my docks and I'm going to mix it with my magenta. And this is actually my night color. Isn't that fun? Instead of, like, a lot of times we go into blue, but I decided to rock this up. Oh, yeah. And just take this into the purples. Oh, I like that purple. Yeah, that's super fun. And I'm going to paint my sky in initially with this, very calmly and smoothly. You can see I'm following around my moon on the edge of my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and paint around my little crow because I don't feel like drawing him back in today. I could, I just don't feel like it. I'm <laughs> just like, <laughs> not today. So there's lots of different ways to put in a painting. Sometimes you can paint in the whole background and then trace over it. Sometimes you can also um, put in acrylic. You know, did I say ground already? Um, you can do a ground. Yeah, just getting this in this first coat. Actually, I was slightly distracted by what the community was distracted by. What was the community distracted by? Apparently, there is a doll in the background. My doll? Your doll. This doll. That doll right there. Oh, my mermaid. And they were like, what is the doll? The was doll like, was, uh, if you followed us last, was it last, when did we last go to, uh, was it ClamorCon or was it VidCon when we got the doll? It was on, over my birthday. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, I think but, it was. Um, I want to say ClamorCon? No. Nah, Maybe think, VidCon? I think it had to be VidCon. And uh, we stopped at Cracker Barrel, and she was a treat to myself. I darkened up the color a little bit, and I'm just painting this in. I'm going to come back and hit this with a couple coats to create a smooth background. Yes, so I love her, and she makes me happy. So she, she joined you on set today? She joined me on set today, and she'll, she'll be part of the um, studio, which was really interesting working today with construction sound <laughs> of my husband in the background and then having to come over and like, I got to drill a wall though. So that was super exciting. I drilled it. You did. I did. You attached hardware. <laughs> I attached hardware. You're making me laugh, which doesn't make me paint good. <laughs> <laughs> you paint good when you laugh. No, well, I mess up, but yeah. <laughs> Just like, it was a lot of fun. So that's what we're doing today. Hopefully you guys are still with us, still painting. I'm getting a little water on my brush today. I don't seem to have such dry conditions. It's I will look over and see. We have 411 people hanging out, painting. 411? And, it, and it's, we've got more, 412. One more person just came in. You know, I wasn't sure how this painting was going to be because, like, we uh, don't, I don't necessarily do a lot of gothic pieces, you know. I like them. Okay, I'm just going to freehand those feet in because this what? is going to be just... Nah, I can just freehand them back in. <laughs> you paint around them carefully. I'm going to freehand them back in. Unless you're like me and you can just freehand them. Or could you be maybe less confident and reuse the traceable again? You could reuse the traceable again. <laughs> 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 that also would work. I, cause, you Don't know, use sense, Mr. Cooney. I can't relate to that. I, I might just retraceable the feet back over. <laughs> I've had a very nonsensical day, so... I can't relate to the sense you're making. So now that my canvas is starting to dry, 
I'm going to add a little more purple into my mix to take this further into my nighttime feel to darken this up a bit. It's oh. so interesting the difference between how the different canvases manage the paint. I have to just tell you, right? Off, like, seriously. What do you mean? Well, this canvas is so much, not canvas, this panel, these panels are so much brighter than the economy canvas, which is what I did the study oh, on. Oh, right. That I actually have to adjust for that, which is crazy. Because they're, 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 the colors are a lot more saturated coming off of the yes. panel, aren't they? Yeah. So you can do these darker paintings, but get more of a wonderful kind of result. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, one of the things that uh, I'll, my little soapbox is, for those of you guys who are painters, um, you know that the, the, when you see a painting in person, it just looks different. The, you, you, there's no photo, no picture online that will ever accurately represent the way that pigments reflect light in person. No, and you know what? I was noticing something today. We were all having a conversation about, you know, that topic, clouds. And I have to let everyone in on a little secret, John. I'm going to have to because I have to put them out of their misery. What's that? I, I need you guys to know something. Oh, the no. clouds and all us YouTubers painting lessons are a lie. What? Yeah, except maybe Tim Gagnon. Um, what it is, is that when we're doing this cute little, like, I have a little brush and I go, F -f 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 technique cloud. If you saw that in real life, you'd be like, that's not the cloud I thought I was looking for. Somehow this camera makes the painting look better. It just does. <laughs> Because I'll look at, I'll be like, ah, the cloud's okay. And I look over at the, the, my monitor and I'm like, that cloud looks great. And I'm like, that's not fair. So I'm just letting you know. It's like the opposite of how weight puts, the camera puts weight on you for TV. It does the opposite. It just makes your cloud look better. I don't know why. <laughs> so I just think maybe a little less cloud pressure on yourselves would be good. I think your clouds look as good on camera as they do in person. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, no, I, I mean, I... <laughs> I think there there may be some like internal objectiveness that the painter has. Or I like, think it's when you're up on on your cloud, it's gonna be unless you're painting like we did the other day with the wildflowers, like where we painted clouds. Yeah, like we painted clouds there, right? Totally painted clouds. Why is Twix so sad? I don't know. I'll go check it out real quick. Yeah, good. <laughs> she's so sad. And she's never sad. Did like somebody take her treats away or something? Oh my gosh. You probably couldn't hear my little dog have her little whimper, but she just had the saddest whimper you ever heard in your life. And, you know, she's usually pretty happy go like little fluff ball. You know how they are. They're like little fluff balls of joy. I know what it is. Did she just want to go outside? Or is it the squirrel has started it again? Did the squirrel start it again? Okay, that was kind of funny. What happened? You had to tell me. I'm going to put some of this bead back too. Okay, so apparently the kids uh, have, you know, they they picked up a bunch of the, the dog toys and put them away. Oh no. And so Twix couldn't find them <laughs> until just now when they were putting away the toys again and Twix found her favorite squeaky toy, which was what was going on in the background. And so she's by the door crying because she wants to go hide it outside. Really? From yeah. the kids? Yeah. She so, doesn't trust them. No. So she just went and hid her toy outside. I think it's because they uh, initially played with her toys like they were their toys and she was not up for the sharing. Is what I think genuinely happened here. So you can see I'm just kind of working this out and making sure that this is a deep rich color that I'm building up on. It's going to take me a couple coats because these colors tend to be transparent and I don't want the diox to be like a true black. Like I want to see the warmth of the magenta in it. So it's just something that I've got to work out and make sure comes out the way I want it to. All right. So we're looking pretty good there. I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse out for a bit. And I'm going to let that have a rest. Well, I might do one thing before I let it rest. You ready for my one thing? Nope, I'm not going to do the one thing. I lied. <laughs> I 
I'm going to get a smaller brush and I work on the moon while this is having a nice cure, a nice dry. It's going to be settling into the panel. And so I'm going to grab a mm -hmm, mm -hmm, brush that I like. How about a number eight cat's tongue? I'm going to put out my yellow. Now my trick is going to be to keep this out of my purple. It's my whole trick here. It's a good trick too. <laughs> so mostly at first I'm going to shade in the moon with its little values. It's going to be light on one side and darker on the other side. And then I'll build up my layers of color as I go right, to create the moon texture. Now what's nice is I'm going to, this is a number eight's cat's tongue. I feel like I said it, but just in case I didn't. And I'm going to stroke yeah, along the have. edge of the brush very smoothly, letting my paint roll out dipping in the water and I may actually one of my little secret tricks and I just want to show it to you is I have two cups of water over here so for my bright colors I've got this one clean cup and then for the darker colors I have the other cup she's still on about it oh what it is I took it away from her why are you taking it away from her she's clearly got a feeling about it it's the squeaky toy oh <laughs> that's a toy. so every time she chews it it goes squeak 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 She's just like, look, I'm just sort of, you can see I'm just like wiggling in here. I think that was the reason why I was taken away from her in the first place. Because <laughs> she was going to get the kids in trouble for making noise. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want to have none of it. Yeah, because I think it was just going squeak, squeak, squeak. They're like, we're not going to get in trouble for the dog making noise. All right. So you can see I'm just painting this side initially. Just yellow, right? Yep. When you're working with really transparent colors, right? And, and this will actually help you be sure and, you know, recognize that you may need a couple glazing layers. That's a thing that you might actually need. A couple glazing layers. I love my cat's tongue. It just does a lot of things that I appreciate. And I will definitely, you know, go, like, where I know I have a black silhouette, I can go over that. That's, that's going to just paint out in about two seconds, right? So I'm going to grab just my little magenta here and some of my white. I find a little bit of white just brings this color out so much. And I'm going to add a little of the yellow to it to get my color. I'm going into my clean water. My, like, my moon will all be over in that clean water side. Sometimes in painting, good water management is a big deal. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like, we're just saying, hey, there's a light side and there's a dark side and that's all fine. Right? Now, I want to kind of make sure I soften this edge a bit. So the reason I'm doing that is actually more for you guys at home. If I soften it, if you soften it, then it'll help you take that hard edge away later. Because remember, transparent glazes. All right, a little more of this with a little more of the yellow. Oh, so warm. Look how gorgeous that is. It's oh, a great yeah. color. It's one of my fave, fave colors. I'm trying to keep my moon round. I got a lot of, I got a lot of moon shade on the mermaid. <laughs> 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 and who's to say it's a moon? Could be a Death Star. Could be a could be a moon that like lost a bunch of itself to, you know, like a meteor. I mean, it's a mermaid planet. That's what I think is so funny is when people get real technical and sciencey on a fantasy painting. It's it's a mermaid planet with different gravity than ours. This is how I could watch Lost in Space and John couldn't. Don't spoil it, John. I'm just saying my ability to not care about the <sighs> science is how I got through. Yeah. But John science. had to care about the science. It's a universal constant, except for in science fiction. Right, because it's pretend. Because it's that fiction, science fiction. Fiction. You know, I was just hoping for science fiction consistency. No, why? Why you put these conditions on life? It's, I, it's not how. That's not how TV works. I don't mind them making up their own rules you as long as they are. Mind. As long as they're consistent Do internally. They do they have, see, look at this. So you're like, wait, I got a yellow pink side. I got this purple thing. What is going on? What is going on? The moon's going on. We're still letting the, the background dry a little bit further. And so while I'm still letting it dry, I'm going to go ahead and put a little of my magenta into my yellow. 
just a little bit here. So you see it's just like I've oranged it up a bit. I'm going to get a nice amount of white as you do. And I'm going to begin like just and just wiggle my brush around, wiggling it back this way. This is my favorite thing to get to do. Like doing this on the moon is like I just love doing this. Making these little moon textures. Moons are so fun to paint, guys. And see how I'm like blending these two areas here kind of together. Just wiggling my brush around. I, if I go like strokes like this, see what I get? Doesn't look very moon like. So I've got to kind of wiggle, I've got to soften it. I can't make those little brush strokes. So if I go like this, doesn't look like a moon. Doesn't look like anything. Not like anything. Adding a little white to it. Yep. I'm just coming here and just, you know, now that I've got the, the shading a little bit, I can come in and add some texture, can't I? Yeah. The beginnings of it. It takes some layers. You need some layers. Layers are always good. Get some more pink on here, because that backside is more pink. Yep. So I gotta get that. So that's really just about pulling out my magenta into the brush, loading a little white into it, and just making sure we pink it up. So what was really, I, when I come along the moon, I'm gonna like kind of stroke smoothly. And two places I can smooth my moon edge up in my sky and on the moon itself, so you know, I just keep thinking about that. Oh, that's a nice little smooth out. Like you do. I'm gonna zoom in up here on the top part so they can see that. How, how streaky it is? Well, it's, it is smooth and streaky, isn't it? It's smooth and streaky, or something like that. <laughs> I like it. All right, now here's an interesting little trick. I gotta take the titch. See how a little purple that is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to be careful because if I do anything crazy, then I'm going to lose the color. But purple, if you follow my big art quest, you will know this, is the contrast of yellow, which means that when you mix them together, it desaturates or what artists like to call grays the color. Hmm. And so that's what we're doing. We're graying the color just a titch. There we go. Just graying in a titch as we're painting it. But if you do too much, you're going to take all the beautiful color out. So treat it like a, like a ghost pepper. <laughs> Don't touch it. All right, just pulling this up here. This is like the most relaxing part of the painting to to, to do because we're like, oh, I'm moving it up. Now I'm gonna get a lot more white on here. A little bit of that more yellow, orange, but a lot more white. And if I need to, a little more water on my brush. Yeah? Yeah, because sometimes you need a little more water. And just a lot more of this. There we go. Just painting it smooth. Making sure that I'm doing these little ruffly strokes. And you can do this with any brush. This is not something like, oh, I have to do it with this one brush or another brush. That's not how any of this works. You can do this with different brushes. Let's smooth that little stroke there. A lot of ways to paint a moon. We've shown spongy ways. We've shown scumbly ways. <laughs> We show all the ways. Big thing is, is you just want to be happy. You need to eventually look at it and go, that's so moonlike, right? Now, on this one, if we had painted the whole sky purple first, we would have not been happy campers. Let's get a little pink into that. We would not have been happy campers in any way. Because it, the colors wouldn't have been able to really cover. We would have had to have like gone at it 
forever. You know, and we want to stop moon painting sometime. At some point. <laughs> but we'll be at it for a minute. Yes, we will. I like. I like watching. Pulling some of this little dry brushing back here. See how that gives some texture and some stuff? It's really wonderful. And it's that layering, that texture, that's going to come back in a bit and tell us that they've got some nice moon. But to layer it now, we're going to have to let it dry so that we can dry brush. And we're going to come back with our purple sky. So I'm going to rinse out this brush like you do. And get back into my colors, which at this point on this way through, I'm going to use two different brushes just so that I have nice um, control over the shapes, right? Like the little spaces that I'm going to have. Yeah. Because I'm going to have, you know, like not enough little spaces. There we go. Just a little more to the magenta this time to come around the moon. Can you see the magenta? Yeah. There we go using the edge of the brush to cut or trim the moon. There we go, going around, going around, and sliding down. Got to trim the moon and brushing that out. I love this stroke. Honestly, this like makes me so happy to do. Yeah? That stroke. <laughs> Now, I'm not supposed to be this excited about a stroke, but I get very excited about it. Now, you're making this stroke sort of radiate around that, mo that moon. I am. And the reason that I do that, right, I'm bringing this magenta. There's a reason? The reason that I do that is that implied brush directionality helps inform the shape of things in the sky, which I think is wonderful. Now... I have a very small space, so I'm going to get a smaller brush because sometimes the bigger brush just doesn't lend itself to what we're doing. Pulling a little more magenta in my sky color. And I'm going to just definitely come here. You can see I'm brushing into this space a bit. Oh, yeah. But it's okay because it's such a transparent color. It's going to go right over my crow but leave me enough information to not have to kill myself to paint her back in or him don't want to crow hasn't really told me that information yet i don't make assumptions and the, the figure in the even there in the painting yeah we don't know do we we, we don't know we There's, don't know it could be an attack helicopter <laughs> my bird identifies as attack helicopter <laughs> that was a good bit of youtube <laughs> Sometimes John and I like to watch other uh, YouTubers just to see how they um, make their videos. Yep. So see, we're just darkening this here. Isn't that wonderful? This is going to help our blue clouds really stand out against the background. I'm really grabbing quite a lot of the purple with just a little bit of the magenta. I love mixing and it's so fun. And one of the tricks is, if you're brand new here and you haven't painted with acrylic, is I flip my brush a lot when I pull the paint into it, and that's how I load it through the bristles. So you might not know that. This is my darkest color, so I'm going to keep that to the outside here. As we're going, see how dark it's gotten? Now on my canvas, and I don't know if the camera can really show this to you, um, it's like a deep grape, and I love it. it. I think we can see the deep grapey grapeness. I'm gonna make some. I'll make some dialed-in adjustments just to make sure I. It's very wonderful. Just a like the best burgundy or. It's really so. What happens is is that by the time I can pick up the full grapiness of it, it starts to blow out the white a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna it's try. Hard to, to do, isn't it? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna see what I can do there. Maybe I can get that a little bit more. You know. It's like, we're going to do what we can. We're getting yeah. close. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab my... Um, that camera sees it. It sees it rapey grape there. This for sure. is a silver Grand Prix number 12 round. It's bristles and filaments together in one brush. I really like that about it. And what that does is a lot of times bristles can oversaturate wa with water. Because they're not really made for acrylic paint, right? They're made for oil paint. And oil paint, uh, in oil painting, you wouldn't say, like, get your brush saturated with turpentines. So, you know, 
not such a big problem but in acrylic painting it is so it used to be that we just have like a whole bunch of bristle brushes around like a whole bunch but with these synthetic blends it's not so bad technology technology so what i'm going to do Gotta first is i'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet and definitely take off any of the extra water and i'm doing this now because I want my paint to be just slightly wet and I'm mixing my purple into my blue with just a little bit more blue and I'm grabbing a smidge see the smidge how I sneak my smidge in I see it of my um, white and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna wiggle this brush I'm gonna wiggle this wiggle 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 all through here so then I'm gonna come down now the trick is I'm not just going circle 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 Right, I'm doing wiggling. wiggling. And if you have the traceable, I gave you guys some really specific like little edges and things that you could follow. And your clouds are totally going to do that. Right now, it's the little bit of white in this that's really, really, really letting it show up. Right, we see those little lighter bits, but this is a nighttime kind of fog scene. So you can't have th it that bright, right? It's a subtle transition. You're being subtle, which I'm not really known for, but it's been, I can do it. Yeah. Right? So I'm loading up that cloud color again into this brush. And I'm going to just, look and see how you can see it there? It's just. Oh, yeah. This is just my favorite part of it. And the reason that we can see these dark colors against each other is like the blue wasn't present in the background sky. And this is thalo blue. So even mixed in and toned back with the purple, it's going to kind of reveal itself. Yeah. And that is a secret little sauce moment. So loading just on the edge of my, my brush here and not overly mixing. And I'm not mixing it together a lot because then I wouldn't get the subtle little variances that I need to get. You know, so I'm, you can see I'm just like, and also notice that the light part is at the tip of my brush. Can you guys see that part? Yeah. So as I'm pressing my brush against the canvas, the brush is engaged from about here through the tip, right? So from about the staining of the bristles through the tip. And that way, when I'm wiggling, it dispenses the white out at the furthest edge of my cloud. You see how it's doing that? And that highlighting is what's giving my cloud shape. And then the randomizing of the shape, I have to paint some of that back out, but it's okay. It's just a back and forth, right? Well, we, we want the clouds to go in front of the moon, right? They will eventually go in front of the moon. Because these are some, th this is some distant sort of foggy atmosphere. Right. We just don't want clouds to ever go behind the moon. They're not going behind the moon, guys. That's, I just, I remember seeing some funny paintings where I was like, Clouds disappeared behind the moon. No, this is like, this is atmosphere. That's a magic moon. No, it's not a magic moon. This is atmospheric. Yeah. You've got you've to you've get into your gothic space. It's all very foggy. It's, it's In atmosphere. low banks. There's right. low banks of clouds, right? Atmosphere. Right? And then they're up in the sky, too. And so there's these weird starless nights, and it's hard to tell where objects are because everything is diffused. Right? See how we're going? Yeah. This is just, we're just, and that's why it's so dark and dim, because you're just trying to, like, relay these objects next to each other. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this down now, right, because we've got a bunch of layers that we've got to do, and this is the darkest one. And, I'm, again, pushing it in random spaces and not making, see how I'm just wiggling this down? Now, for this kind of thing, it is good in your paint box to have a tool like this. It doesn't have to be this exact one. I like this exact one very, very much and can highly recommend it. But, you know, what you're talking about is a nice, loose round, right? Let's come here a little bit underneath, but not too much. There we go. I think we're pretty good. So do we have some nice atmosphere? I think we do, right? I'm going to rinse out. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm going to wring this brush out as much as I can. And I'm going to get its little friend, the number, well, maybe, do I have a number eight? Or is it? I do. 
the number eight Cambridge braids. This is a this is a nice little braid. I'm gonna come over here into my good clean water. Remember we were switching the waters back out. And I'm gonna start getting my brighter pinks. Make sure your brush is not overly soaked. My brighter pinks in loaded into the brush, little bit of white, little bit of white, and just a smidge of yellow. Warms it up just a bit. Little, see I'm very careful with the white because if I get too white I'm just going to get like a skin color. Mm. Which is not bad if you need it and we're going to actually use that trick in a little bit for his ears to make his ears or her ears. So see we're just on the edge of the, see how I'm wiggling this back and forth? I do. Yeah wiggle 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 wiggle. Now I'm going to, I'm going to be so soft so I'm barely touching this canvas. Look at us go. Look at this go. That's really good. I Isn't like that, that a lot. Wonderful. And then I'm gonna bring let's bring some moon spots here. I've actually got one I'm working on that is just like all about the moon, like and accurately. If you have somebody in your life that uh, needs a not fantasy moon, they need the actual moon, the one off our planet, got that one coming up. Mm. With correct um, by NASA <laughs> photograph <laughs> by NASA. Uh, different little shapes. So I'm going to add a little more white as I'm coming down. And see that I am? A little more white. You can see that's just a lot more pink, isn't it? And so, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Been working on that. Working on so many, especially for St. Jude Played Live coming up, which we're going to be doing all May. I'm excited about that. And, uh, Although John is going to have to release some paintings from from storage for fundraising. That's okay because it's for the charity. It's for the kids. Yes, that I will part with original show pieces for. So for that whole space of time, it's going to be really interesting because we're going to do a lot of different stuff on the channel than what we normally do. Um, lots of things that would be exciting. For the little brushes in your life. Things that talk about adaptive sports. A lot of like sports paintings. Just just completely like all the requests I've ever gotten from kids mm -hmm. <laughs> over all my years on YouTube. We're going to like work it out. <laughs> so see how I'm pulling this up and making this little moon shape. It's like comes up like here and it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Nope. There we go. Oh, I like that. I'm going to just bring that. I love doing that. And then I'm going to come back with more of my pink with a little bit of my yellow in it. They were noticing that the picture in picture looks a bit different than the picture you're painting. In what way? Well, I think it's because the colors are probably from what my cameras are picking up. I'm having to move them all over the place. So I don't think we're getting the full spectrum there as really? much here. And, I, and that's, you know, I'm just... Uh, as we move through here, what I'll, what I'll say is that I'm going to do my best to make sure I keep correcting these so that uh, oh, I keep the... Keep pulling this right here. I love it. Let's pull it right here. Yeah. I don't know what you guys are seeing. I'm not sure either here. I'm, I'm, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to acknowledge that... Uh, they're seeing it. That there, there may be something they're seeing here. Okay, so we've got our on. very lightest color right here, kind of coming around this uh, hat space, right? I see. We're just in the, still in the undercoating, an underpainting phase, I think is what it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because as we start, I, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Once you start getting more of the, the background. Oh, yeah. This will look like the painting. I yeah. mean, there's always little, little, I mean, I'm not a copy machine, so there's always weird little differences, but not in general, you know, massive ones. But it can happen. I think mostly it's because we're in that layering phase. The layers are very important, man. They really are. You got you to gotta respect the layers. See, we're just, just processing this up. I just wiped off extra paint so my dry brushing will go better. You can see I'm just wiggling this edge. And now we have that nice like little glow space around the hat. Let's get a little more of our pink. I love our pure magenta. It's a powerful, powerful color, right? this and when you work it into the right canvas in the right way it's just luminous the quinacridone colors are like no other 
And you can get them in lower cost paints. You really can. There's um, some good quality. I think I needed to keep that quite light. I needed to keep that quite light, so I'm going to take that right back because I, I overly darkened that, and i got to just make sure that this is. See, I'm just wiggling this out and creating this little moon shape. So are we okay? Oh, yeah. Are they starting to see it now? I'm like, I don't know what's happening for you guys. But I can tell something is happening. Oh, no. So I, I think it was just we're at the underpainting phase. Yeah. Well, that's always a hot mess, isn't it? Well, the uh, the picture in picture is just a lot lighter. There's more blues. And well, so, there's more clouds. Well, yeah, there's more clouds. And, and they're blue. And once you get those clouds in. They'll blue up a lot. Yeah, they'll blue up a lot. But you have to have that dark background or they don't pop. Right. That's what I was... Uh, was that what you were saying to him? You're like, hey, guys, we just need our dark background. I was typing all of that in slowly while I was working. So I just, we and just managed to. switching cameras and watching kids. and. Well, we just managed to say exactly what I was like trying to type out quietly over here. Just so much faster. Now, look, I'm just like, I'm lightning around him, right? I'm yep. creating this little, like, little halo space, which is wonderful. And bring it down here, too. And just scuff, scuffling and scumbling, right? Yeah. Scuffling and scumbling and scooching all around. So we're looking pretty good. Now we got to come over to the other side and we're going to get some yellow on here. Go yellow, 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 yellow. Yellow, 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 yellow. So much yellow. But to get this next thing, we're going to have to be mostly white. So what are we going to do? We're going to get a lot of our yellow on here. Come right here. And we're gonna just scumble up. And so this is a lighter color. And I'm look, I'm just tapping it in. Look, I can even go like this. I can go tap, 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 tap. Wiggle, 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 tap, 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 tap. I'm what am I trying to create? I'm creating a soft edge through here. I think I found a, a new moon crater that I have to pursue. Sometimes you'll see something in your painting, you're like, oh I gotta pursue that. That's really great. It's a crater. It's very moonish. It could be a sea. There are seas on the moon. That's right. I think they just tried to be romantic about what they were calling things, but that's fine. No, it was just back when people didn't have telescopes to look anymore, they thought that there may have been giant seas on and oceans on the moon. They just didn't know. So they were no. they they called them there was like, you know, sea of tranquility. So you know, humans have been guessing at things for a long time. Silly humans. There was a there's a man in the moon, there's a face on the moon. We found managed to find that, and <laughs> you know. I'm gonna bring my very lightest color around this outer edge. See how I'm doing? And get a little more of it. So it's quite a lot of white to my pigment load. I'm coming on the edge of my brush, brushing this down, right? Lightening it up. This outer edge. This outer edge. Oh, now that's nice and light. Now let's start to pull that lightness into the moon. Oh, here we go. I love painting moons. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh, so see how I'm keeping, like, this shape goes down and in and out and around and back, right? I'm all, even in the light, subtle colors, I'm making those little variances. You can't leave the variances behind. You need them. And my brush isn't washed, so the pigment is coming out, right, into the brush. So I'm going to get a little more of my warm yellow in there so that the pigment load in there is the warm yellow because a lot of this is about the play of the colors between the two spheres. There we go. See how it's warmed up? It is warming. Warming up, and now we're getting like this two tone little moon. So I think it's fun. It looks multi-tonal. I think you've mixed those yellows and reds and whites into like some magic. <laughs> some different There's moon colors. magic. Moon magic. It is. I, I declare moon magic has happened. Well, I'll take moon magic every time. I went. I went to school enough that I can declare it. Did you? Sure. I was an astrophysics major. I know. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. There's somebody out there naming stars, so. 
So I'm just making sure that this side of my moon is light, right? So it's almost a glow. That's the, that's the goal of whatever you're doing here, whatever colors you're making the moon in, fantasy colors, realistic colors. Let's get a little, just the yellow into my white. You know, whatever those are, you know, what you're still basically doing is shaping your celestial object mm -hmm. to have lights and darks, random, as John pointed out, kind of patterns of craters and mismarkings and different things, right? And also to have a highlight and a shadow. Makes it feel rounded. Yeah. And we definitely want our moon to be rounded. So way, way working my lights here. Look at this. Isn't that great? I love layering it up. By doing the layers, I think it enforces so much of my moon texture. And by not rinsing my brush and keeping it dirty. <laughs> I know that's like. So my track has to span really dirty. Mm -hmm. With my paint water. No, um, with my brush. But you know what? I just had a panic attack. Like, oh no, the algorithm is going to recognize those words and like demonetize my video. <laughs> Dirty paint water. Channel taken down. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't believe that would happen. I would be very, very surprised. I'm going to bring some of this down here around the bird. So he's going to pop, right? So we've got the pink there. I think we're getting to some good space with this. Let me look, let me look, let me look. <gasps> Oh, is that looking great? Yes. Now, rinse, rinse, rinse in your good water. And you're going to grab a small brush. I'm going to get um, one of my little brights. I think I'm going to get my number two bright. This is in my Art Sherpa little bright. It's a number two. It's small. I have a lot of control over it. And I'm going to take a little of my yellow and red. Right, my magenta and my yellow. A little more to the pink, but I, I definitely want a distinctive kind of warm yellow to it. And I'm going to go ahead and put out a smidge, just right at this moment, of my black. So I'm going to just smidge it with just a smidge of my black, like you do. And I'm going to come here on the ears. It's going to seem like a dark, dingy color, and you're going to be like, there is no way. Like, no way that this is what I want. But it is. That's, that's one of those things is you've got to put the layers in. You do. On this one, you definitely do. And this was a in, like an interesting choice. I'm like, cause sometimes I'm like, oh, I should simplify it for you guys. But then I'm like, but you guys are learning to paint, right? So. Yeah. Because we could edit these videos down quite a bit, but it's... Yeah, I think we probably actually, do this in 20 minutes and call it tutorial. But I think we, we do better. I have more fun producing this live with you guys, with all our community here yeah. and doing this. I mean, like, this is this is way more fun for me. So Me too. And we've got, like, almost 500 people here, so I think they like it too. I think so too. So I'm going to take just a little of my black while this is all still wet, and I'm going to come to the edge, just like this. Wipe off my brush on a towel and very softly, using the bristles, blend it into the still wet paint. See how I've done? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little more up. I'm going to get some water in it if I need to. And then from where the hat is, I'm going to make a secondary shadow, but I'm going to leave just a smidge of this, like glowing. Lighter. But just a little bit. See how I'm working it? Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm subtracting. So this is a thing that you can do in art. You can subtract. And I'm going to come over and do the other side. I'm going to come around this edge. And then at the back, line that. Wipe my brush off. And kind of blend and soften. See, because he's like... These ears are very in the dark, so a little bit of color shift is going to be a big, big deal. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to get a little of my uh, red and yellow. 
you're like, this is a lot of work on the ears. I know, guys. And I'm like, I'm like, just tap in just a little bit of this glow right here. Just tap at in this the glow. little edge. When the hat goes in, it's crazy how it works when you pull it off. There we go. There we go. We are doing so awesome. Now, we've got to get some clouds in, and then we're going to paint him in in the crow, and that part actually goes pretty quickly. So I think to get the rest of my clouds, I'm going to work my number eight bright. Oh. Rinse it out really well. I'm going to come back into my purple and blue. You were about to say something, John, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. I was just, P.S. just said th th that uh, she'd be heartbroken if we uh, broke, if we, if we shortened the lesson to 20 minutes. <laughs> it would just not be as fun. Not for me either. <laughs> just not as fun. It's not what we do. And a lot of people do that really, really well. So let's celebrate them for doing that really, really well for the 20-minute demo. For the 20-minute demo. You do it so well. Yay! not mean that caddy <laughs> i'm drinking i'm drinking my coffee too and scratching twix okay so i am see how i just tipped my brush with just a little bit of white now i gotta put some clouds in front of my moon oh. so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna come over from the right oh, get over there. i'm gonna oh, just much bluer right see how this is we're gonna come back up maybe swoop down and then as i come across the moon i'm gonna a little more of the white into here, All right? Like we're gonna bring this forward. And then on the base, on the bottom, we go back and forth. Now I'm gonna blend all this out, which is gonna take it out for just a second, but we come back Right, with m more white pigment, and that's where we're gonna find our little, our little clouds, man. So back with the white pigment. Let's just see how we're doing. Just the edge, just that front edge. Let's uh, let's give this front edge a little bit of a thought there, and come here in this front edge. Little bit of a thought here. And then I know, like, I could have, like, another little. Let's bring that down, and then we're going to go to the right. I mean, to the left. See, I'm just very lightly brushing this back. Look at that. Just brushing that back. Right back off. If I need a little more white on my, on my clouds. All right. Just come and work just a high spot of that so there's there's a mix of paint right and so you just look at that we're gonna need a little bit of pop of white there we go there we go and there could be like a little fellow that's right here. And it just goes swirl, swirl up, and then I move it down. And I'm just trying to. So I think when I pay attention to, and you guys might be paying attention more to this circular motion. And what I'm paying attention to is this top contour line. See that right there? That's what I'm watching. How's my contour? I like the contour. Well, the contour is the cloud. <laughs> The contour is the cloud. The contour is where your cloud is, man. And you've got to get your contour. So, all right. So let's, I've got another little, little, this one is quite dark. It's going to come down and I'm going to come across again because I love it when my clouds cross in front of my moon. Are you using zinc white or titanium white? Titanium white. Titanium white. I felt like there was a lot going on in this painting, and for people that didn't have zinc, I was going to do it without. So sometimes I'll do that. I'll be like, if there's a way to do it without zinc, or there's not, like, yeah, I think if you went zinc, it'd be, some of it would be easier. I'm getting a little water on my brush, which is going to really change the way it flows off. Okay. Just back here again. And then we're just going to keep putting some of this blue down as we come down. All right, we've got the deep color that we've had the whole way. 
Much more blue now happening down here. And then I'm pulling this all the way down and I'm just very loosely and expressively painting it first because it's when I come through the highlights and find the contours that these clouds will pop and come out of the background. So here we go, getting a little of my white. Let's pop a few of these. Pop just the front of the clouds, look at that. So this is just like, look, I just go kiss, 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 kiss. Kiss, 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 kiss. In front of you, in front of you, in the front of you. And then right into this wet, which just really blends it and softens it out. Look at that happen. Let's come right here. A little more. Ooh, too much white, but that's okay. I'll just work it out. And see how I like soften the edge of that outer edge to it? Sweeping that back up. Now I can get my darker color. And I can come along the edge of my cloud and sweep it up if I need to. Alright, sweep it up. I'll sweep up this one while I'm at it. Alright, back into my blue. Grab a little bit of white. Just looks like let's give ourselves a little a little bit of atmosphere here, right? A little bit of thought. Now if you get it too like brussily like I have there, you could take any of your brushes and just sort of soften it if you need to. Alright, so we can always always soften. Our cloud a little bit if we need to so don't be limited to like one idea of like how you might soften it or what you might do I'm gonna come here and make, I'm finding different little fronts look at me find that little front and then those little highlights aren't those great those are great little highlights here we go the little one here and I think I'm going to get more into the blue as I'm coming down here. See so how we're going more into that blue? You get down in there. I'm, huh? Just wanting to make oh. sure I get zoomed in. Yeah, i got to get zoomed in. So I'm going to come across here and I'm going to just imply a few little loose fellows. Look at that. Into this dark space. I'm just very softly pushing a little bit of that. There we go. Little highlights, little low lights. Just sort of wiggle, 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 softening it as I pull it down. But now we have some different little variables, don't we? Yeah. Get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So when you pull more into the phthalo, man, you change the whole game here. Now, Beverly wanted me to ask, and Althina and I think several other people are echoing this as I'm saying it. Hi, Althina and Beverly and everyone who's asking a question. I feel like I should say hi before like, the question gets asked <laughs> just in case I'm like, oh, what? Actually, they asked me to pass along something to you. Oh, okay. They said that, uh, well, well, Beverly said, I would have never believed I could paint without cinnamon. Really? And she wanted me to pass that along to you, and right immediately, Althina was like, me too, me too. Oh, and then there was a, a, a chorus of it. So I appreciate that. I, uh, I thought it was worth passing along. So you guys have the traceable. So if you're having problems finding your clouds, that's, you know, where you can find them and where you can get them. Um, if you haven't ever done them before and those shapes are really challenging for you, you know, that's a good way to do it. I have the uneven little bit of uh, white onto this brush. And so I'm going to come right here. And now, 
I'm going to zoom in on it because you don't mix that too thoroughly. You leave no, some. No, it really seriously thorough mixing will like take your clouds away. You don't want to mix your clouds too thoroughly because and what the heck, you know, they're going to be like, what? And a light touch is your friend. As you'd want. Look at that one. Oh, I love that one. That, one, that little dude's like perfect. I'm going to hint at one right here. I like that one. I like this one right there. So a little more blue, a little more purple, just a smidge. See, just it's just this titch of the white. And if you get too much on there, it just doesn't do the thing it's supposed to do. That's super annoying. A little too blue, so I come at what grab too much purple. That'll happen sometimes. I get like enthusiastic with my brush and then I grab too much of a color. There we go. There we are. See how I'm able to like use that to like blend ourselves some little shapes. And this little shape can kind of come down here. There we go. Just working that. So oftentimes when I'm painting my brush, I'll go, oh, there's a nice dark bit, or oh, there's a nice light bit, and I'll lean into one of those bits, you know, let's uh, start to give this distant little cloud like we did earlier with the big brush, right? Some shape. And I'm going to bring this down around him. And then once I have that sort of laid in, I'll grab a little of this white. I'm just like I'm pressing in and I'm wiggling. And now it's pushing. You want the white? See the tips of my bristles? I'm going to go get a little bit on the tips of my bristles. See where it is? And then that just makes that little distant fluffy little guy for me, right? Now we have these distant little fluffy little guys. And these are blended into the little space. So I feel like, let's look at that. Let's see how we're doing. We've got some clouds. You know, and you can always come back through with your mix. Make sure that different little bits are thought about. Look at that. I'm sorry. I just can't help it. I just love it so much. So much. You know, I'm always saying it's my favorite, but it's just fun to find edges. Yep. Find, find the little edges in your life. Pay attention to them. And if you get too much of anything, you just come back through. And blend it away. That's what you do. You just come back through. So fun. So what I'm looking for, what you're looking for, your cloud edges should have some light to them. They should have some light values and they should have some, especially in this type of a sky, some deep, deep, dark depth. Deep, deep depth. Deep, deep depths. And if you lose your deep, deep depths, be sure and come back and put them in wherever you can. Right? Because you're just talking about some little atmosphere. Especially in this space. It's just not clear sky, it's little atmospheric bits of sky. So there we go, we have that in. I'm gonna paint this out. I'm gonna need a nice edged brush. You have all of your brushes are nice edged. All the brushes I'm using are nice edged. I'm plugging my brushes. But, but like <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll show you, like the Sherpa ones are like a super edge. Like I can even do a bigger one. You don't you don't have to show for brush. I'm just teasing. Oh, okay. Well this is a number ten. This is like a, a goalie locks and You can use any brush you want. We just we do have super sharp brushes. Yeah, we do. I don't wanna make you guys have to get totally different brushes. I'm just gonna go back to my eight. Okay. That just seems ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you just have to on the list. Don't notice that I painted with that one. So I don't want to have to keep adding it to the list. Then people think you have to have all the brushes to do the lesson. And you don't. And you don't. Any brush you want to use will work. As I long as you can make the marks. Tell you what I'm using. Yeah. 
So I'm just coming on the edge here. Boy, that's super black. It's so black. It is the, it is the darkest, mattest black. It is a bit matte, isn't it? I'm going to see if I can. No, it's super matte. It's like, oh, man. Not the world's blackest black, but still pretty dark. Dare we even utter the word Vanta? Yes, we always utter the word Vanta. <laughs> because, like, you know, like all art controversies, it's silly. Oh, please embroil us in that in some art controversy so we can get some some extra viewage. Be outraged, yeah. I, yeah like I don't know, like, yeah, Vanta gonna... black isn't the blackest black. I want to. Uh, we'll talk smack about that. <laughs> well, I, think I don't the know. Blackest black. Banta is it's it's the um, simple's black that isn't technically the world's blackest black. It's just the world's blackest black that you can buy that's matte. It's matte. Banta black is some weird bit of like aerospace science. There's all sorts of crazy stuff. So sorry, I was I was probably talking about things that were not necessarily fully explained. And sorry about that. Yeah, there is a guy named Amish Kapoor who licensed a space uh, technology black that you can't see into like it literally sucks all white <laughs> and then but he what he did that was controversial is he got a contract with the company basically stating that no other artist could use his black <laughs> and then some other artists got really mad about it not that they really wanted it particularly before then but after for sure but after you said they couldn't have it then they wanted it so the trick to this is going to be like the blue and the black together so you're just going to get the the phthalo blue and a little bit of the black and then you get some white into it at first it's going to look like barely a color but what happens is, is when you come along say the hat band and you edge it like this oh yeah and you come across the other side and you edge it just a little bit with this blue. All right, this is the hat band. No. It barely shows, but once it's there, then you're like, oh, wow, that's like amazing. Makes a big difference. It does. And then if you get too, you don't want to be too light in the middle of it. It's pretty easy just to come back with some black and blend it out, see? Now, there's a really good question here while we're talking about blacks. Okay. I am loading my brush with blue and getting a little bit of white because I'm going to do the hat now, the top of the hat. What is the difference the between edge. Mars and ivory black? So we have a whole video about every black, and I go into that. That's actually a pretty big explanation. Mars, the, however, is like this created black, and ivory black used to be the tusks of elephants. But uh, it's really hard for paint companies to source anything because, you know, they don't have poaching money, <laughs> nor are they particularly interested in poaching. <laughs> As a community, they're not like about the murder of elephants in general. So they have to, um, some of the fine oil companies will make deals with uh, parks or uh, different animal preserves uh, for the bones of elephant graveyards where the elephants are no longer visiting. Right. So it's, it's like very, echo, it's very responsibly sourced, guys. So see how I'm creating this slight highlight. It's just so slight on the top of the hat. Yeah. And if you get too much of it, what do you do? You just go back into your black and just soften it out, don't you? See, so silhouettes can still be very sophisticated uh, painting processes for sure. And I just made kind of like a the gray when you do the gray with the blue it's like a really cool like little color and it's just about saying there's little highlights there now i'm going to take this little highlight that i've got it's a little more purple than i want so i'm going to rinse that out because i don't want purple in any way i got my blue and my black here we go blue and black blue and black a little bit of white a little more white and then you can come right to the edge of this and pull it a little more distinctly. All right, now I'm gonna wipe that off, get a bunch more black, make sure my hat is the blackest black that uh, regular people paint. <laughs> Even if it's not Vanta black, look, you're never gonna be here where we don't sit there and talk about Vanta black. That's, that's gonna be a convo because it happened and it happened in our time. So my first thing, when I paint the rim, I'm going to be very careful around that highlight that I've created. And I'm going to just catch my lips 
my ellipse of the hat touches the top of my coat and tucks down over the ears. This is when you're going to go, oh my gosh, the ears look like they're ears that are kind of lit up by moonlight. But in the dark, how did that happen? Planning is how that happened. We planned. All right, so we're pulling this. See how I'm using the brush to keep a nice, smooth, transitional edge? Right, it's almost like calligraphy. Look, I move out, I curve, and then as I pull back, look at what the bristles do. They pull back with me and help me tuck that space. Oh my gosh, who couldn't love them for that? I love that. See, it's very easy for me slowly and meticulously to edge out my hat. And then once I have that edged out, you go back into your blue. Haven't rinsed my brush and your white. And you're going to come right here along this brim and just as light as you can, the white to the outer edge, you're going to highlight it just a smidge. See how we're doing? Mm-hmm. And that small highlight... Kind of make a huge difference. And I'm just making sure my brim is good. There we go. So that's how you get the hat in. Now back into the black, black, black to do the collar. The collar is comes up and touches the hat and comes down to the shoulder. Touches the hat, comes down to the shoulder. Go ahead and just paint that all in black at first. Everything just black, 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 black. Black, 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 black. <laughs> By the way, how cool those ears now look. They do pop out. They do. And see, right now, if you have just too much highlight at the back of them, you can add just a little extra shadow. All right. See what I'm doing? Very softly with the corner of my brush to make sure that they are, that there's like a back of a head implied here. It's, it's a subtle touch, but boy, it matters. Now, I do have my brush stroke following these sort of lines, so the curve of the collar... I do curve the stroke. See how I'm doing? And when I'm going to come across the shoulders, I am going to follow my shoulder line. So if I come up his shoulder, I am going to follow those lines as much as I can. Because these little strokes imply a lot. So whatever you got to do to even it out, don't stress about that. I'm going to just bring this up. So I come up the shoulder. And I'm going to swoop up into the neck. And then the down the back. Everything black. Now, do you prefer, everything black. Do you prefer Mars or carbon black? I tend to use Mars. Um... Lamp or carbon black is a very deep color. Um, bone black, tinseless. Bone black is kind of like what would be ivory black, but isn't ivory black. Um, it used to be like, of course, like not every artist used to be able to afford elephant tusks so that they would just do like burned bones. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you had to be somebody like Turner, just like <laughs> with a friend with a paint company, which I now have. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> but sometimes it's like you've got to have the friend who's like, listen, I'll crush your uh, malachite real, real like perfectly so it's green. So you don't have to die of green poisoning, which like killed Napoleon. Napoleon died of paint. Have to have to wonder if there's anyone who will... Who Just will... in case you didn't know that, Napoleon died, of, Napoleon died of paint. Really? Yep. He died of paint. He died of paint. That's what killed him, not, st not stomach cancer. It's paint. Oh. 
That's interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, when all your rooms are green and the green is made out of a highly toxic, toxic substance, mostly altered arsenic, that combined with mold becomes like a super problem, Erin Brockovich would have lost her mind. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was a very fun student. I'll tell you that right now. I used to just be shocked. Like, whatever we were coming, I, I, like, had the courtesy to be like, I'm so shocked for everyone involved. Okay, so I'm going to come. I've mixed my blue and my white and my black, and I'm going to come on the outside of the color, the collar, just very carefully. You're just hinting some light in there. Hinting a little light. And I'm using the blue so that the light feels cool at nighttime. You ever watch like a TV show and, and they like mood light it blue? Yeah. And that's what we're doing. It's. All right. So we've got that, right? Once that's done, out, so grab a little, little of bit. your black on there. And well, that's too much. There, some blue got in there that I didn't want. So I'm just going to come right there. And let's get this kind of like flowing again. A little of the white, white and black, right? A little white and black, but you don't want it to be too much or it'll just take over the whole collar. Just a little bit right here, just a smidge. Don't let it get crazy on you. <laughs> it'll get crazy and then you'll be painting it back out for the next hour. Hopefully I won't. That happened to me yesterday. All right. So now we've lit his collar so we can see it, right? Can we all see it? Is it showing up on camera? I can't tell. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. Here, let me look up here again so you can see there. There are very subtle differences. Okay. And you can, you can see them across the, the – as, as you paint them in there. But it is it – is, that is a dark black. I'll accentuate this so you guys can see Oh, no. You can, we can see there. Okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. Like, oh, my God. No, no. It's okay. Not to be able to see it. That's very stressful. Oh, okay. no, no. I, I've got it dialed so you can see there. All right. Now, we're, how we get the shoulders is real interesting. I'm going to take a little of my blue and my black together like we like to. Get a little of my white on here. And then I'm going to come right here, the curve. And then just the brush on the wide. See how we've got it? Yeah. Come to the other side, do the same thing. Right, and then come on the wide. There's a reason why we did it that way. Because we're going to come back with our black. And that edging that so it feels more like light. See how we kind of like softened it? Yeah. Where you just need it to disappear, you just work it back into the black. There we go. Let's do the same on this side. You can even come with just a little, like, true gray, like black and white makes a true gray. We forget that, but it does. <laughs> and just, you know... Right there. And that, I'm going to actually, I'm going to paint in my crow now. If you need to, you can go over any of your black. If it's streaky at all, for many of you, if you're painting a student paint, or certain types of black will be very streaky. And on this piece, you're not going to want those streaks, so do the number of coats that you need to make your figure the foreboding, dark character that he is. Now, I'm going to do an interesting thing here. It's subtle. I'm not even sure it shows in the reference. It may only just show in the original painting. But I'm going to make sure that this part of the coat, right, that when we come up to where the collar is, see how I'm doing this? I don't know if it's showing on camera. Yep, it does. I can you you can see the black okay. just over going over. It makes a weird difference. It does. I would never tell you guys this stuff listed, but it does. So there it is. Here he is. He's doing really well. Looking really good. And he looking really, really good? Yeah. The crow, which is like totally my fave. 
My fave, my fave, my fave. I'm gonna get a little round detail brush and my glasses, because who can see? I certainly can't. So dipping in my water, this is a number four round. I'm gonna load up on my brush and I'm gonna come in just very carefully and put in the basis of the body of my crow. All right. Make sure you've left room for his feet just to perch somehow. And I think that that's what we usually lose when we're painting like birds or weird scenes like this. I'm gonna not do the beak because the beak's gonna kind of go in in like a dark gray. It's a slightly different color. Definitely leave the eye in. Actually, I'll show you the coolest trick for the eye. You guys are gonna trip out. You're gonna be like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it's totally how to do the eye. So we're just painting around the beak. And we're gonna come. Oh, you know what? What? I think I needed to push in the sky to him a little bit. So I'm gonna do a little thing. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my pink and my purple. And I'm gonna bring this in because I lost my inlet curve. See how I did here? Yeah. Because my I was like doing my sky and I did not leave room for his little curve. So I'm just working very carefully around him. All right, now we go. So now we have that nice little, over here, I'm gonna go flick, 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 flick. And come down for the wing. Okay, now the wings. Have a long little feather and kind of taper in. And there we go. He's going to take a couple coats. He took me a couple coats. And come down the tail feathers. I'm going to just take the stroke and flick it. And each one I'll just do a little bit less. And that's going to help him feel like those little feathers are there. See those? Mm -hmm. So here we go. Is everybody okay? Yeah. We're nearly done. I'd say we're 10 minutes from done. Well, that's pretty good. But I don't want to call it just in case I'm wrong. No, this is a raven, right? This is a raven. Now, crows are oftentimes, uh, they're, they're a little, they're a different size. They're bigger, aren't they? Uh, I believe the raven is bigger. The raven is bigger. And they tend to have a larger beak. They have a different sound that they make. And they have a little more fluff to him. Yep. They also, I think they, they kind of have a, a a more, you know, aerodynamic kind of, I don't know, they're both, they're, they're birds, they're all aerodynamic, but I mean, like, one looks more like a fighter jet, and the other one looks more like, you know, kind of Believe it like or a, not, the crow, uh, the, the crow is, it's, it was weird, I looked it up, I was like, I thought that the, I, I actually had it reversed in my head, and yeah. I went on the like, Audubon website, and was like, what is going on, which is which? Yep. I, I, so that would be my whole thing. I did the things that they said that my raven had to have <laughs> to be well, I know that raven -y, which is why he's a little bit fluffy. But he was small. Yeah. But that's okay. Because he could be like he could be like an adolescent. Well, crows are more in packs and ravens are more in pairs. This is true. Where we're gonna get it or lose it is somewhere around the beak. Oh yeah? The, yeah. Well, you, you they have that that you have that long hooky beak like ra like ravens have, and, and crows yeah. tend to have that shorter. Exactly. And so you've you've nailed that raven head. I'm trying to, but it's going to be some fussing right here. Even on this one, I'll be like painting out some beak and then back with some sky, and then I may have to get into a smaller detail brush to even trim this up. But I got to get the base beak in, otherwise we ain't going to get nowhere. And then I'll clean it up. <laughs> what? I just realized, well, we've got Raven Locks and a uh, couple of kids named Raven. We <laughs> probably have some resources here in the community where I could have gone, hey, 
What's the difference between a raven and a crow? Oh, and they would our have been community just like, is nothing but resources. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people who know about the difference. Yeah, super true. Yeah, All right. right. Now, while I've got this bigger brush, which does a better fluff, right? I've just kind of wiped out the extra moisture. I've loaded up some black. Right here at the beak, I'm going to take a couple little feathers. This is actually very important for raven identification. You have this little fluff at the beak. A little bit. And then we're going to come back. Go ahead and fluff it off right here. Fluff right there. At the the next crux. See how the little feathers kind of just... I'm literally... What I'm doing is I'm letting the bristles do the work. Just a little flick, flick, flick. Little flick, flick, flicks. That's how I get the little... See, it's just a little fluffier. Yeah. And there at the belly. And then definitely where his foot's going to be, he's a little bit fluffier. But I'm not going to even try to mess with that until... I've got uh, him painted in. All right, so there he is. I'm going to get a detail brush that I feel like I can trust, that I feel like I can believe in. All right, I've got this little one here. I don't know what I'm cleaning right now. This is a number two Filbert short handle. It's a small detail brush. I'm going to pull out my fluid white, which I showed you guys at the beginning. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that I'm doing to get that to come out. And I'm going to at first kind of get this gray going so that I can get his legs on and then I'll come back with a high light and a low light. So what I did was is I would I placed the foot and then I brought the claw back. And some of the foot came sort of forward. Ooh, the claw. And then it does this little sort of thing into him. And then we have another little back here where the claw comes around. And again, if you're not a drawer, you can absolutely just use the traceable. And I have this sort of in this gray so I can see it when I come to work it. Because, you know, I'm going to work it. So I have that in. Getting a little bit more of my black there. I'm going to make sure that I fluff up the leg like you would have. And let's start doing something about this beak, right? Okay, I'm going to get a little of my uh, magenta and even just a smidge of my white into it. I got my purple in there. I'm just kind of creating a slightly my sky color again. And I'm going to come and make sure that my beak is the correct shape. You guys doing okay? Oh, yeah. All this right. is excellent. And I'm just trimming back anything that I overpainted. That's the, I just put down too much paint. And I'm just working that out. So I'm going to get my gray, which is my white, and my black again. I'll go a little darker with it this time at first. I'm going to come out. There's my point. I'm going to bring it back. And come back into his face just a smidge. There we go. That's a better top now. And then slightly darker for the bottom beak. Right? Slightly darker. There we go. Correct beak now. I'm trimming it up and getting that line. Letting that dry for a second. Here is the cool trick about the eye. So I'm going to take a little of my blue 
and my uh, I might have to use the fluid white that's got a little gray into it but see this color I'm making here I'm gonna come right back from his little little corner here and I'm gonna make this interesting little sort of like a upside down C it's like a little half moon takes me a minute to get it in this is how I do these like detailed little eyes though. Really hard to do on a smaller painting. When I have that in, when I have that weird shape in, I get my black. I made sure my brush is not carrying any extra water. And I thin the line like this. Can you see that? Yeah. There we go. Now I need to give him a couple extra feathers, I can tell. I'm making sure, like, I don't have crazy paint. I'm going to come under the beak here and make a very fine line. I'm going to get a lighter gray, a slightly lighter gray. I'm going to come here at the front of the beak. And a little bit along at first the top, taking that to the tip. This is probably the most precise part of this painting. I might even add just a little bit of a, see I'm tapping in just the smallest highlight under the beak here. Yeah. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush so I don't have too much pigment and I'm going to get mostly my white but because my brush hasn't been rinsed off it won't be bright white which I don't really want it to be. And I'm going to come right down the center of the beak making a little highlight. And if you've got a very steady hand you can come along the top. And make, see, I always make them smile. What is my deal? What is your deal? I don't know. I, I like it. I'm not going to make them smile. That's not what we're doing today. I, you know, ravens tend to kind of have that grin to them. Yeah, but this one, he's doing a little grim thing. He's a little more the crow, right? He's a little more like, hey, Brandon, you got to watch out. <laughs> okay. So there we are. It's a conspiracy, Brandon. I've taken some of his smirk off. <laughs> some of it. Now I'm going to come back through. I'm going to come underneath his leg. Make a shadow. And I'm going to come right here. Deep in. See how I'm doing? I'm edging yeah. that. Nice little back of the leg shadow. I'm going to wipe off so I don't have too much pigment and get a little white on there. But it's not like pure white, right? Yeah. And we're going to come along the top of the foot. And then I'm going to come along the back of the claw. Top of the foot. Back of the claw. You can even like uh, edge some of the feathers. There's a little bit of a highlight there. See right here? These weird little touches can help him to pop. You can come along your hat, not to stress everybody out as I jump around, with your detail brush. Right? There you go, look at that. And just like that he's almost in uh, silhouette, right? Yeah. Well, he is in silhouette. I don't know why I said almost. He is. It's like totally factually what he is. So those are just some weird little lines that you got, I feel like are good to do. Okay, now. Now it gets complicated. Let's get our blue. And let's get 
uh, are heavy bodied white. And you don't want a sky color, you want a deep sapphire color. You're going to come around his eye, even darker. Tapping this dark sapphire color down. Can you see it? Yeah. Now he's got a little bit right here. There's just enough white on my brush to help some of this show. So that when we're talking about his little feathers here. It's as if they're iridescent and reflective. So you can see how sky blue would not help you with this goal. Huh. Right, just a little bit on him. A little bit at the tail. Talk about the top of the wing. Maybe a little bit off this. And yet, we have not completely nailed it. We rinse out. We're going to again, heavy body white and pure pink. And you want it the darkest magenta that you can still see. Come under his little eye. A little bit maybe right here. Even darker than that. It's too pink just enough white where it pulls against the black but it's still it's like the blue it's got to be the darker version of itself where it just doesn't carry all right and maybe a little bit right here see how we go doing yeah a little bit off the back of the wing let's just brush a little bit off the back of the wing a little bit off the little tail. I'm pulling the paint off with my fingers and I'm getting some just pure magenta just to make sure that this white, oh, there we go. Not so saturated because it should be a deep. Deep, deep kind of little color right here under the little chin. I got a little something going here. If you overpaint any of it at all, you can always go back with your black, right? And knock it back, can't you? Yeah. So you're not stuck with anything that you don't want. Now to get his eye, you can take your detail brush and you're going to get it on its sharpest point that you can. You're going to come under the eye. Just hardly anything there. And then right here. And that's how you get your raven in. Can't, I don't know if you guys can even see this painting on the big oh, yeah. screen. It's so blown totally. out. Oh, I almost put my brush in my coffee. <laughs> now, of course, the last thing that we need to do is sign. I'm well, here. pretty proud of us for getting through this piece. Yeah, this looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and just get into my magenta and my fluid white, I think, to sign this is what my strong feeling is. And I think it's what I felt before what I did earlier. <laughs> so I'm going to come right here. Whoops. Let's remove that. <laughs> <laughs> damp brushes do a lot. Not saying the other thing. I'm saying damp. Right. Let's try again. It works. Just very carefully signing. A little more magenta. A little more magenta, man. So I do think signatures impact artwork. And all I have to say about that is just be thoughtful. Yeah. Whatever you choose to do as an artist, be thoughtful. I'm just, you know, futzing. Let me get down over there. See what you're futzing. Oh, yeah. Just tapping him out. Okay. Sorry, I cannot help it. I'm see, trying to make him more feathery. You, you see, how, see how good he looks there? You can see really close on that close. I still made him smile. Trust yeah. the trade. Yep. 
recognizable. I'm in a better space now, and my crow ended up smiling. I don't know what to tell you. It happens. Everything that's going on inside of you kind of ekes out. There's just no way to stop it. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.